Hello, welcome back to the OTB channel. Today I want to start with a little bit of a story. So just to set the mood, let's have some music. And the story begins back in 2004, 2005, after my initial excursions into Linux with uh, an old PC that run a K, ran a K6-2 CPU, I'd uh, built a new machine with one of the brand new AMD 64 processors. And I was quite the player. I was flirting with uh, Warty Warthog and uh, Hoary Hedgehog, the new Ubuntu guys on the block. I'd played around with Slackware, Mandriva or Mandrake as it was, Sousa, and I was multi-booting. I must have had four or five different distros, distros on my hard drive at any one time. None of them was perfect though. They all had problems. The early Ubuntu's kept crashing on me with HAL errors. I don't even think that's still a thing. Um, and I couldn't find that perfect, that perfect distro. Until one day in 2006, a copy of Linux format arrived on my uh, doormat with a free DVD of Fedora Core 4 on it. So I thought, well, why not? Let's give it a go. And I installed her. And she was absolutely brilliant. We got on like a house on fire. She never let me down. She was as solid as a rock. Yes, yeah, she was a little bit plain and awkward. She didn't play nicely with MP3s or, or many of the uh, proprietary bits of software that I wanted to use. But I introduced her to uh, her friend, the Livno repository, and she learned and we got on quite well. She was never that pretty out of the box, uh, but there was something about her plain known to desktop environment that just appealed to me and which has stayed with me ever since. I even went as far as upgrading to Fedora Core 5 and again, we got on brilliantly. What a relationship we had. Me, Fedora, it was the main driver. I had other distros on my hard drive, but I rarely booted into them. For me, it was all about Fedora. But they were strange days. There was distros emerging left, right and center. Um, and I was having my head turned. Open Suze was really pretty. Ubuntu with its sultry brown sludge looks had a certain appeal and was promising to do everything for me. And it was becoming more stable. And I had my head turned and I drifted off and I'm sorry to say, I was influenced and I left Fedora in the background. And yes, there were things such as hardware failures which, which caused her to be removed from my hard drive, but it would be fairer to say that we just drifted apart. Relationships are like that, I suppose. And we drifted apart back in 2006. It's now 2019. And I've never revisited. I've, I've occasionally thought, what would it have been like if we'd stayed together? Maybe we should perhaps arrange to see each other and see if we still get on. And that's what this review is all about. So enough of the music. Let's give Fedora 30 a spin and see if it's still as good as it was back in the Fedora Core 4 days. Right, uh, let's test Fedora. You won't be surprised to learn that I've downloaded the Fedora Mate spin for a couple of reasons. Firstly, uh, as you know, Mate is my preferred desktop. 
and that choice really heralds all the way back to the original Fedora, which ran GNOME 2. So if I'm going to do a comparison 13 years or so on, it makes sense to have something relatively similar to what I used to work with. Um, and secondly, I, I just prefer Mate. Um, <laughs> so to give it uh, the best review possible, it makes sense to run uh, a Windows environment that uh, I know I enjoy and I'm comfortable with. So um, I've done the usual thing. I've set this up in uh, VirtualBox. I've downloaded the ISO file and attached it to the virtual optical drive. I've created a 32 gig virtual hard drive, which will be far more than we actually need. I've given this uh, eight gig of RAM and I've given it two threads of my i5 processor. And again, importantly, I've set it up in UEFI mode. So let's press start and see what happens. Not good. <laughs> oh, hello. Suddenly we've got a menu. Start Fedora Mate or test this media. Let's just start and see where we get to. So VirtualBox seems to now be booting. I've no idea what Draycut is. Something's failed there. The hardware monitoring service. Sorry. The sensors, I don't think that's too important at this stage. And hopefully now we'll come to the login screen. And we do. And Fedora always had great wallpapers. And uh, I've got to say that looking at the login screen, the same seems to be true. I presume I just click on login. And we'll wait and see what happens. Right, um, the resolution isn't great at the moment. I did try booting this earlier and I don't think it has the guest editions installed. So I've just uh, scaled it up. So it's a little bit distorted at the moment. But once we've installed it, I'll uh, install the guest editions so that we can have a proper look. Right, so looking at this, it seems to be your standard Mate desktop. Application menu, places menu, and the system menu. And DNF Dragora, no idea what that actually is at this stage. But let's just proceed to install it and then we'll run through the system. So I'm going to double click install to hard drive. It used to have um, a system called Anaconda. I don't know if it still uses that. Um, I don't even know if that's what I'm looking at now. But English, it's picked English United Kingdom. Right, that's interesting. It's picked it straight away, so all good. What about this picture here? Current layout US. Can I change that? Not from there by the look of it. Localization. Keyboard UK. Time and date Europe and London. That's actually pretty good. Uh, installation destination. Automatic partitioning selected. I need to know what that is. Network and host name. Just wired. ENP0S3. Okay. Let's have a look. Installation destination. It's spotted. I've created a 32 gig hard drive. Automatic storage configuration. I don't know what that is. Um, I'm a little bit dubious here because Fedora always used to go for um, a straightforward LVM setup. I think LVM is a little bit over the top for what I want to do. So I'm just going to click custom and hold on. Let's refresh. Rescan the disks. Okay. Custom configuration. Full disk summary and bootloader. Right. Hmm. 
going to close that. Let's just click done there and see where it brings us to. Ah, right, you haven't created any mount points. Fine. Well, I just want to create a standard partition. Uh, da, da, da. Let's... Let's do 300 megabytes. Hopefully, that actually figures out what it is. So, mount point, oh, 286 megabytes, that'll be fine. Standard partition, yeah. File system, EFI system partition. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. And then for the remainder, let's just create a root partition. Desired capacity. Uh, let's do 20 gigabytes. That should be enough. Okay. Not quite as straightforward as... Um, the partitioner uh, using Calamaris. Uh, I've not used this before, but I suppose once you get used to it, it's straightforward. I'll click done on the manual partitioning. Checking storage configuration. Click for details. You have not specified a, a swap partition, yeah. I did that on purpose. I don't really want to do that. So let's have a look. Create and format. What on earth is it doing here? Partition table GT, GPT. Okay, that's great. SDA1, SDA2, SDA2. Ah, right, I see. So it's creating the devices SDA1 and SDA2, and then it's creating the partitions. Okay, I'm going to accept the changes. Let's just hope this works. Right, begin installation. Right, root password. Let's just set that. And we'll do that again. Done. And user creation. So OTB. Make this user administrator. Hmm. I don't know whether that means it's going to give me pseudo privileges. I'm just going to leave it as is for the time being. And it's installing software. It's 21% done, 22% done now. So I'll come back once it's finished. And it's now 11.48, so that didn't take long at all. Uh, it's telling me it's completed. So go ahead and reboot to start using it well i'll do that now i'll reboot into the system i will add the guest additions and we'll come back once i've done that and we are back and we are running at the full uh 1920 by 1080p uh, if i can just show you that there you go now I had a few problems when uh, I rebooted. A um, couple of issues, really. The first one uh, was I didn't have sudo access. And it turned out that on the installation screen where it asked, do you want to make your user an administrator? I should have ticked that. <laughs> and that would have automatically given me user access. When I checked my groups... In the terminal, you can see there it says OTB and wheel. Um, what actually it showed when I first uh, booted was just OTB. So I wasn't uh, a member of the wheel group. I resolved that by going into the control center 
and clicking on users and groups. I then added a group. How did I do that actually? I went into users for OTB. I hit properties. I went to the groups tab and I ticked the wheel group. I then opened up a terminal again and I went into root and I issued the vi sudo command with the intention that what I would do would be to uh, remove the comments on this particular uh, entry, allow people in the group wheel to run all commands. But as soon as I got there, I saw that actually there wasn't a problem because users in the wheel group were already given access. So that was fine. So, all good. Um, I then tried to install the guest editions and I went into DNF Dragora, which is the GUI, uh, a little bit like... Um, what we used to have something called Yumex uh, back in Fedora Core 4, Fedora Core 5. And um, I searched for VirtualBox guest editions and I installed them. Unfortunately, it didn't make any difference. And I had to find a how-to on the interweb. And I ended up having to install the uh, kernel headers and a couple of other packages and then installing the guest editions, the standard guest editions from within VirtualBox. And finally, it all works. So here we are. I've got the full 1080p. I've got the Marte desktop, which I have to say is, is quite nice. Uh, I'm not a fan of green. And it seems that whenever uh, I choose Marte on... Uh, to, to install Marte on any distribution, it always seems to default to green. Uh, at least this doesn't, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, it's very plain, other than the, the nice wallpaper, which I do like. Um, it has the accessories menu. It has Plank installed, but that wasn't there by default. I've installed that. Uh, it has a few graphics applications, I have Marte. It has Firefox, Thunderbird, Transmission, and uh, an IRC client, as well as FileZilla. It has LibreOffice installed. Exale, which I'm presuming is a music player, but I'll explore that after. And pretty much the standard stuff there. Uh, Marte System Monitor. What are we running at? 1.1 gig, apparently. Okay, let's check that in HTOP. I don't know if HTOP's installed, but we're about to find out. No, it's not. Now, when I last ran Fedora, uh, I used Yum. I believe we used DNF here, so I should just be able to hit DNF, sudo DNF install, HTOP. Let's just make that a bit bigger. Enter my password. Is this okay? Yes, it is. All good. Let's run HTOP. Okay, so it's running 887 megs. I mean, this is a virtual machine, so you have to allow it a little bit of uh, leeway. Um, it's not bad. It's certainly not what I'd call lightweight, but nevertheless, it's fine. So uh, let's just hit F10, close window. We then have the places menu, and we have our system menu with the standard sort of bits and pieces. Now, I've not been used to using Compiz at all. 
um, with my Mate. And so I'm not used to setting anything up with the settings manager. And I'm just having a look here to see what's set up by default. And I'm sort of pleased that not too much is ticked. I remember the days of spinning cubes and all the rest of it, and I was never really a fan. So this seems to just have a light touch as far as the compass effects are concerned. And in fact, this is running in 1080, and compared to when I looked at Peppermint, uh, the XFCE version of uh, Peppermint last week, the effects were causing a few problems for me recording in 1080. I don't seem to be getting that with this. I can open up a file manager and there's not too much going on there in terms of effects and that's exactly what I want. I want a compositor there to stop the screen tearing and make sure everything's a smooth experience, but that's about it. That's about as far as I want to go. Now, uh, what else is here that I've not used before? This DNF Dragora, as I say, seems to be what used to be Yumex, but a similar version for the DNF uh, package management system. I don't quite know why they've gone to DNF from Yum, but as long as it does the job, everything's fine. I did do uh, a DNF update and update the entire system um, before I install the kernel headers so I could get the resolution sorted. My only comment from the word go would be that it seems to be quite a bit slower than apt or even than Pac-Man. But there was a lot of updates came down the line and that might simply have been because of the amount that needed to be uh, updated. But the update ran smoothly, I didn't have a problem, all good. Now, I believe what I need to do at this point, if I want to use packages that are classed as non-free, is to um, add an additional repository. Now, back in the day, that repository was Livna. I believe that is now all part of the RPM Fusion repository. So I've opened up the R RPM Fusion uh, repository here, and I'm just having a quick look at how to set this up in the command line. And it seems to be this line, which will add the free and the non-free repos. So let me open up the terminal. Make that a bit bigger. If I hit sudo and paste and hit return. Hopefully this should add the repositories and that seemed to be pretty straightforward. If I now do a sudo dnf update I don't know if anything extra is going to come down the line. But RPM Fusion is clearly there now. Okay, there's no additional uh, packages to update. I used the package manager DNF Dragora earlier to um, install Plank wherever it's gone. There, there we are, we have Plank. But I would also like to install the Brisk menu. I couldn't find it in the standard uh, Fedora repositories. So let's see if I can find it here. If it will let me type anything. And search for it. Hmm. Okay. I'm not seeing the brisk menu here at the moment. 
maybe there's another way of getting hold of that. I'm not entirely sure, but let's start the customization. And I'll start that by deleting this panel. I always delete the bottom panel. I'll go into accessories. I'll start plank. Okay, all good. Now, in order to configure plank, you normally have to uh, click control and then right click with your mouse, sometimes a bit fiddly. And it's certainly proving fiddly at the moment. And it's uh, one of the problems I'm having is the fact that in VirtualBox, it's hard to actually grab hold of this. Aha, there we go. So I want to shrink that slightly. I tend to like a relatively short plank. IntelliHide, okay. Um, actually, I don't think I'm gonna hide it at all for the time being. And for docklets, okay, there aren't any pre-configured, but that's fine. I'm then gonna go up to my top panel and I'm going to add a Windows list. I'm going to get rid of all these icons. You'll have to excuse my phone dinging away there. I'm going to lock that to the panel. Okay, so apart from the brisk menu, that's pretty much Fedora done. I will need, no doubt, to sort out the keyboard. The Mate user manager. So why is that different? Okay, it's pretty much a, a repeat of the users and groups. Um, I will need to have a look at keyboard shortcuts. Let's see if we can find the launch terminal. There we go, launch terminal, double click there, alt control T. Done. Uh, it's bringing up the main one from my, uh, there we go. So if I now do within here, alt control T, yes, it's bringing up a terminal. So that's absolutely great. What about the keyboard itself? What layout am I on? I'm on English at UK. I have to say, this is the first distro that I've gone to where irrespective of what locale and language I set dur during installation, uh, Marte has always tended to default to uh, English US. So the fact that it's already on UK is a real bonus. Let me just turn off my phone because it's dinging away. I'm actually on a day off today, but uh, I'm, I'm monitoring my uh, work emails and texts just in case. So not a lot more to say, really. The system looks like a straightforward uh, Marte installation. Um, it's quite plain to start off with. I'll need to do something about these uh, icons, I think. They're a little bit plain to my way of thinking. In fact, they don't look much different to how they were in uh, Fedora 4. But installation, okay, fine. I think I prefer um, the Calamaris installer. It's more intuitive, but it's just a case of what you're used to. I might keep this in VirtualBox for a while and just play around with it. But as a first look, it looks great to me. Um, not really a lot more to say. Let's have a chat about this. And that's Fedora. Um, initial impressions? <laughs> It doesn't actually look a lot different to what I remember in 2004, but that's probably because I was using the Mate desktop. It's a solid, solid distro. 
It still needs repositories adding if you want to add non-free components. I was a little bit concerned at the lack of a brisk menu, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I'm going to continue to play with it in VirtualBox and get it customized to my liking. Uh, I was worried about uh, the Compiz uh, compositor, but it seems to be fine. It's, it's not over the top. And... Uh, it deserves its place as one of the top 10. Fedora's been around a long time. It's one of the big guns. And uh, I've always thought of it as uh, the testing ground for Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux, uh, which I believe it still is. And if you're thinking of uh, working with RHEL in the future, well, Fedora's probably a good distro to install. Will I be installing it again? possibly in the future I didn't see anything compelling enough to drive me to do it immediately um, but it's solid I, I do like it and although I've had a tendency to play with um, Debian based systems and Arch based systems and Slackware for the last decade or so I have no fundamental opposition or philosophy that goes against using RPM distros. For me, a distro can be made to look however you want. As long as the distro is relatively stable, that's ultimately what matters. Um, the package manager, well, it's just a package manager, whether it's DNF, apt, uh, Pac-Man, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, Fedora's looking good. Um... I might install it on uh, one of my laptops, see what it's like there. You don't really get a proper feel of a, a distro until it's run on uh, real hardware rather than in VirtualBox, but all good. Um, I was a little bit disappointed uh, at having to mess about to get the guest editions working, but that's a minor thing, really. So, I hope you enjoyed this. By all means, try Fedora. I may or may not get something else out this week weekend. We shall see. I'm off today, Friday, so I'm having a long weekend. And uh, it's all about managing the time. But thanks for today, and I'll see you again soon. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so... Please like and subscribe, it really helps, and stay well until next time.